Want your hair to look like this? Yeah, of course you do. It's pretty, it's vintage, and it's surprisingly easy. Hi, I'm Isabel. I'm going to show you how to do this look. First things first, you're going to need a medium hold hairspray. I'm using L'Oreal Infinium Force 3. You'll also need a thermal fixing spray. I'm using L'Oreal Techna Art Ply. Lastly, you'll want a styling cream or a very, very light wax. I'm using L'Oreal Lumi Control Modeling Wax. You'll need plenty of duckbill clips. Just make sure they don't have teeth. You want to gently hold the hair in place, not dent it. It's also good to have a few roller clips handy. They're great for smaller hair sections. You'll need a heat resistant tail comb. It is very, very important that it's heat resistant or you might end up with melted plastic in your hair. You'll need a finishing brush. I'm using a board bristle tail brush, but anything board bristle will do. Um, if you feel like spending a lot of money, a uh, Mason Pearson brush is amazing. I'm using a one and one quarter inch professional curling iron. You can use whatever iron you'd like. Just remember that the smaller the barrel, the tighter the curl, and the bigger the barrel, the looser the curl. I'm replicating a vintage roller set using a curling iron. Women used to do this with wet hair and rollers. You still can, but it takes forever to dry. Using the curling iron saves a lot of time. You can also do this with hot rollers. Just know that the curls might not last quite as long. Start off with a two to three inch section at the front. Each section should be about the same width as your curling iron. I like to spray each section individually with the thermal fixing spray, but a lot of people like to spray it all over their hair before even picking up the iron. It's totally up to you, there's no right or wrong. Make sure you comb each section individually before curling it. Smooth hair is essential for keeping this look vintage and sophisticated as opposed to trashy. You can use your tail comb to create a barrier between the iron and your scalp for safety. You know the curl is ready when the hair is hot to the touch. Just really make sure you're only touching the hair, not the iron. That can be very, very painful if you're not careful. Try to keep the curl as intact as possible while sliding out the iron. Remember, as long as the hair is hot, it's being shaped. So keep the curl nice and tight and secure it in place with a duckbill clip. Roll the whole top of your head away from your face and roll the sides and back of your hair downwards. Your end result should look something like this. After your hair has completely cooled, take out your pins and give your hair a good once over with your hairspray. Slide your fingers along your scalp and give your roots a really good shake. This helps to blend the gaps between your curls. Use your brush to carefully brush the hair into your desired shape. Don't be afraid to brush it. If you set the curls properly, they should be able to withstand a good brushing. The look I'm doing here is smooth, but I'm leaving the curls still a little separated, especially at the bottom, to make it a bit more modern. I'm looking at the model's features while brushing to see what looks good on her. Don't be afraid to experiment. With the basic curl pattern I showed you, you can create a ton of different looks and shapes. In general, the more you brush and blend the curls, the more vintage it will look. The more you separate the curls with your fingertips, the more tousled and modern it'll look. You've given your hair an excellent foundation, and now you get to be creative. 
Don't be afraid to use your hands for this, and don't forget to have fun. Once you've settled on the shape and style that you like, rub a little bit of styling cream between your palms and gently smooth down any flyaways. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. The style not only looks great on its own, but can be used as a fantastic foundation for updos. This is Isabel signing off for HairStyleStars.com.